Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hey, John. Welcome, everybody, to Unfiltered, a random moment with Pastor David. And today, Pastor, I still want to continue talking a little bit more about uh, marriage and the family as you uh, have started the series. And uh, and we've been going through, you're going to actually, you started the series and you looked at the institution of marriage. And on, on Tuesday, we looked at uh, how evil has infiltrated specifically the LGBTQ question mark has infiltrated the minds of our children and in our marriage marriages. Today I want to speak a little bit about uh, the role of the husband being the head of the marriage and so many times we can hear the first part of Paul's addressing of marriage in the family says wives submit to your husbands and Men can take that and run with it. Uh, but the next, it says that Paul says, and husbands, love your wives as Christ has loved the church. Saying that there's a role that us men as husbands must play. Uh, what does this include, Pastor? Does it include dying to ourself? Does it include removing the mask of, of you know, this male role and because I think there's this misconception with even husbands that can say, well, hu wives submit to me, but yet for that to happen, there must be a role that the men play. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, prior to the Lord's uh, word through Paul to um, submit, you know, wives submit unto your husbands and all. For that, he had just said, uh, submitting to one another in the fear of God, right? So the church is actually the... Um, the body of Christ that is submitted to the headship of Christ. And so within the confines of the church, there is a, in relationships, there's a mutual submission. You know, the people of the, of the body, for example, the members of the church are um, submitted to Christ, but they're also submitted to godly leadership, you know, and they're submitted to one another in the sense of being there to minister to, care for, and subordinate themselves on occasion um, because that's how uh, a body works you know the the body actually works together as a whole and so we we will strengthen the body strengthens itself when something's injured I have I, I injured my leg recently and the whole body has rallied my body has rallied to take the pressure off of the one area that's hurt in order for it to be able to heal that's what bodies do well the body of Christ is 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 working in unity is to be submitted to one another in the fear of god and ministering in the same way and all of that so when we talk about submission um, and uh, husbands very often those who are familiar with the term in our day it's really not it's really not that understood anymore mm -hmm. frankly i think there are quite a number of people who think that's so archaic and <laughs> and and all it's just out of out of fashion now and we do see house husbands now and house fathers who are raising children while, while the wife goes out to earn their daily bread and all. There's such a, such a twisting and turning and changing of society um, that it's, something like this may seem old fashioned to speak about, but it's been said and rightly so that if there are two heads on one body, it's a monster. Hmm. When you have two leaders who are vying for the position of leadership or headship, um, then there's no unity. You're gonna, you know, how can two walk together unless they be agreed? So when you have this kind of vying for uh, leadership and all, uh, it's, it's not ever really good. It, every baseball team has a single right. leader. Every football team should have a leader, not multiple leaders, but you'll have your offensive leader, you have your defensive captain, whatever. You know, militaries in the same way. You know, we have ranks and orders for a reason. And so I, I don't see why people don't understand that in, in the body of Christ. And so, yeah, the wife has the responsibility to voluntarily subordinate herself to the leadership of the husband. The husband is to love the wife the way Christ loved the church. And how did he do that? Well, he was sacrificial in his love for for the church. And, and uh, so we, are, as husbands, we, we love our wives through the sacrifice that we voluntarily yield to her and yield for her. I was uh, in another state recently where a man came up to me afterwards. I was speaking at a conference, but he wanted to speak to me about 
his marital problems. I, I don't know him. I can't stay there and help him through those problems, but he's asking me to. And um, as we were speaking, he was speaking about how he's the leader of the house. And, and he had this bravado, this um, machismo that's misunderstood. You know, that's another thing. If I should use the word macho. Macho isn't what people think macho is. Right. Right. You know, it's not your bully and pushing and stuff like that. It's a, it's a, a, a man who can be respected, a man who's a man of his word, a man who is a, a, man who is a, a, a good man. You know, that, that's, that's true machismo, but that's a different subject. So talk about that some other time. But because he had this misunderstanding of it, because he thought she was to be subservient, and he used that word, well, she's to be subservient to me. I said, listen, I said, you are to serve her. And, what, and he got really irritated over that. You know, what do you mean I'm supposed to serve? I said, Who's the greatest in the kingdom? The servant of all. Mm -hmm. And a man loves and serves his wife without the expectation that she's supposed to do that. That's what he does, and as he does that, and he's loving her and cherishing her, and, and he knows her, you know, like Peter says to us, you know, husbands dwell with your wife according to knowledge. Well, when you make her the center of your attention in your study, when you get to know her, you know her ways, her moods, you know her as a woman, you know the things she likes, the things she doesn't like, the colors she thinks are nice, all of those things. When you really study your wife and you know her friends, her history, you know things of that nature, not because you're trying to control her, but because you want to know her. When she realizes that you're studying her and caring for her and cherishing her and loving her and, and doing the best you can to be that man, then you begin to understand what the role of the husband really is. You know, And so Christ showed us what the role of the husband was to be because he's the husband of the body. Right. He's the husband of the church. And so he showed us what the perfect husband is. He washes with the the water of the word, you know, he's sacrificial in his love and things of that nature. And so, you know, my wife submits to me, not because I, because I bully her into submission, not because I force her or raise my voice or, or act in an untoward way towards her. She, she submits to me because she's submitting as unto the Lord. And because in my love and care for her and cherishing of her and and willing to sacrifice myself for her, and she knows all those things, it has made it a much easier thing for her to be able to submit. And so it's if we love our wives as Christ has loved the church, and we do our job as husbands in loving Christ and loving our wives, then it's just natural for our, it is, our yeah, wives yeah. to love. Our wives respond, we initiate. Versus, as you're giving this example, you're subservient to me and blah 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 There's you're demeaning the woman you're not you're not valuing her you know you're not cherishing her you know to cherish means to to treat with tenderness and care and concern you're not cherishing her you know so first peter chapter 3 and um ephesians chapter 5 give to us insight into the love that a husband ought to have for for his wife and we look forward to hearing that when you return yeah. Uh, as we get into that study and so pastor thank you so much uh, for sharing a little bit about this and then uh, just want to remind our church that we have services at uh, 8 30 and 10 45 Sunday morning and uh, look forward to having you guys come join us and uh, and again we have our Israel sign up still going on yeah. July 10th we're going to have uh, uh, Bill Fuliano coming up from Inspired Travel but July 3rd we're going to have our church baptism. Mm -hmm. So we want to have you guys come out and join us. Uh, I think you tried baptizing me once, Pastor, but my... It took three it, of us. <laughs> my legs didn't stop kicking or no bubbles came up. <laughs> you wanted to swim in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> I might share that. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor, so much. Thank you guys for tuning in. God bless you, and we'll see you soon.